What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to another Bucks on Deck podcast episode. My name is Anthony Murphy. With me again, of course, my co-host back from a, a fun weekend, hopefully. Nice little weekend off of everything. Mr. No be able to tell by my voice today. <laughs> How's it going, man? How was your weekend? That was pretty good, you know. Uh, there was a pretty uh, amazing cover band called Dirt Bags at one of the places. I mean, you can't not sing to break stuff when biscuits so i mean man's got a point there man has got a point <laughs> so busy busy weekend um busy week gonna get into some uh, minor league stuff we're actually gonna talk a little bit about the pirates uh kind of prospect prospect related another thing that i kind of came up in ben charrington's um show ben charrington's radio show or whatever like that that um I thought was a little bit on the funny side, at least for me, with hearing hearing him say that. Um, but first, we're going to start with um, kind of a prospect thing. He's still technically a prospect, but Jared Jones pitched Monday night when recording. Just got to watch that. Um, Nola, it's pretty good, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's pretty awesome. The man, the myth, the legend, uh, and it, 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 even in certain spots where I mean. You, you you're thinking it might break a little bit. There was a couple times there, especially in the uh, sixth inning. I was like, I don't know if he's going to get through it, and he stuck it out. I love I love that they they stuck with him there and just let him try to fit. It's like you know, bases loaded. You did this. We're going to give you this one last batter to try to get let you get mm-hmm. out of this, and and he did. He did. But he did. I mean, like you said, I keep waiting for. Not, not that I'm like this. Maybe saying I keep waiting, saying it that way is going to make it seem like I'm, I'm rooting against him. I'm not. I, I, I mean, you know, I, I, I love Jared Jones. He's he's an amazing pitcher. But like, I keep waiting for some of the stuff that we saw in the minor leagues to kind of pop up here and there, and it 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 just hasn't. He's taken his game to like a a whole new level that I don't think I know that I haven't. I don't think I've ever seen a stretch of him like this in the minors that he's doing at the majors right now. No, not at all. I mean, it, it, we, we always talk about him. It was just, it was from the get go, especially with the fastball and slider was always okay. The stuff is there. That's that stuff is definitely there. It's just sequencing tunneling and command of it um, was always the, his biggest issue. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's like he would have a couple games to where he would just like dominate in, in in the minors, and then he'd have a few where he'd walk three or four guys, and and can't hit, can't find the strike zone, leaves too much stuff over the middle of the plate, fall behind on, on hitters, and like even even a, you know command and control aside, just like the even the stuff itself feels like it's taken like another tip forward. And we've noticed that some Mm. with like the, the TJ stats and everything like that, like, Mm. like the specs on the fastball and stuff, like they, they were good. Like you could, you could tell, see why he had success and all that. But like this year, like he's just, even with the fastball, he's just mowing people down. He had, he had almost a 50% whiff rate just uh, Monday night on its, on its own at 13 whiffs with the, the fastball, another 11, with the slider it's just and to do this like the like every question that i feel like i had about him and i think like i'll, I'll be honest with it i think i was i was fairly critical of him over the off season you know just because like he had that really good stretch at the end of the year but like i was i kind of kept pointing back to the you know oh he's being a too reliant on the fastball slider you know that's that's mm-hmm. not going to work in the majors that can't work in the ma- you know People like to point to Spencer Strider, but you know he's more of like an outlier in that in, in that kind of situation and stuff like that. And then even then, he added like the curveball this year before he got hurt. So it's 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 just incredible to see just like him answer every single question that any every single evaluators had on him and do well, so. I, yeah, and a lot of times too, what would happen with him in the majors, and we've seen with some of the other prospects too, like. Uh, you know, Mike Burrows, even before he went down with injury and like how we would talk about Dotel or Ercolani up until, you know, them doing so well, at least on the early goings this year. But, you know, to be the type of 
starts where you know you'd get three innings of a complete shutdown starter can't be touched, and then fourth inning or fifth inning it would just crumble. Mm-hmm. Like Vila would drop, Command would completely dissipate, and would they start losing? So which that's kind of the route it was going in the six with losing the zone and walking a couple batters, and but he he. he Put his foot down and got through it. Yeah, yeah. And like you spoke to that, you know, you, you said about like the stuff playing deeper in the games. I, I remember the when I got to see him in in, in Richmond, like he was hitting 98, 99 the first couple of innings, and and I don't. And then by the time like the the sixth, seventh rolled around, he was down down in like 94, 95. I don't think he got like a strikeout like the last two or three innings that he pitched and all that. Like just everything kind of became a lot more hittable at, at that point mm-hmm. and, and like it's just I know I've, I've probably said it a couple times it's just incredible to see the kind of strides he's made and and to do it at the level that he's doing it at yeah and then even I'm I, I'm uh, currently reading this uh, Sarah Lang's tweet about how Jared Jones 98 swings and misses this season are tied for eighth most by a pitcher in his first five starts of the season in the pitch tracking era mm-hmm and then he's number one, DeGrom, 118, Bieber, 111, Bieber, 107, Strider, 105, McClanahan, 100, Scherzer, 100, Sale, 99, and then Ty with Gosman, 22. But also, his 98 swings and misses are the most by a pitcher in his first five career starts in the pitch tracking era. The prior record was Tanaka, 84. Nice. Nice. I saw another one. Um, where like Strasburg was, they had like he he like the Strasburg thing, and you know, we, we we like to make that joke. You know, every prospect's the best prospect since uh, Strasburg. Mm-hmm. Looks like looks like the Pirates already had that on the major league roster, and again, mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. But yeah, Jared Jones, very good, and and all of a sudden now maybe the that whole um. PPI pick might not be too far out the uh, out of the question at this point. Yeah, and I I, uh, I actually got a parlay bet with him in it early in the season, so let's go. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sure those odds are starting to look less uh, less enticing to put some money down. Yeah, uh, I think I think I got him when he was still like plus eighteen hundred. So good right there. Okay, so. Going to be fun, it's fun to watch. What is it like? The the cutoff is about like fifty innings or something like that for sure to to have them off all like prospect lists pretty much. Uh yeah, once fifty. Fifty. The I mean the, it's fifty innings. So once they hit fifty point one, is when they, gone. So not too much fun there on them. So. But yeah. yeah, I didn't have I didn't have the time today to do my uh, full update. Definitely. So. Tuesday at some point, I'll Tuesday. do it. Okay, right. maybe. So, sticking with the pirates here, we're gonna get on to our next uh, next topic on it. Um, during Ben Charrington's radio show or whatever it's like that, he made a comment about the the defense maybe not playing to what they expected, and. Not to not to set maybe sound critical again in the second straight thing, but I had a little chuckle yeah. at that because we talked about that a lot during during spring and and during mm-hmm. the offseason as they're kind of putting the team together at and he's saying that this is not as they're not playing quite to expected, but I think this is pretty much where we expected them to be, more or less, right? I mean, obviously, I don't think we neither of us would have put like Cabrian Hayes at, at a negative one outs above average right now, but. I think about yeah, just about I, everyone else is probably where you would expect them to be. Um, mostly, yeah. Um, <clears throat> I, I didn't expect it to be this bad. I thought it'd be kind of league average at worst, especially with Hayes, Triolo, Taylor. Mm-hmm. I figured they would kind of help carry the weight as well as – um, Taylor playing center, pushing Swinsky to right field was like okay, or left field. yeah. Left field. Um, yeah. Uh, I thought that would help him. Yeah, which yeah, Reynolds been splitting his time. I thought 
them moving to the corners would help their defense, but yeah, I guess part of that too depends on. I know there's a uh, like way they like a multiplier that kind of knocks out fibber sometimes, but yeah, I, it's been a trip. Yeah. So it's been going, trip. Going, just going off of outs above average. I know you 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 were pulling up like fan grass and stuff like that, but just just going off outs uh, outs above average on uh, baseball savant. Only the Marlins have a worse team defense than than the Pirates. The Pirates have a negative nine outs above average. The Marlins have a minus negative sixteen. So they're like on a different level, I guess. Still, <laughs> um, the infield the infield only has a negative one. It's it's really the outfield that's causing the the issues with it. Like you you know you're talking about kind of like the hope was that Sawinski moving to a corner would kind of help them a little bit. It hasn't. Well, mm-hmm. I pulled up the number. I don't think they've up. I don't, I pulled this up right after the Pirates game. So I doubt they're updated. If, if like a game will make that much of a change on it. Mm-hmm. But um, Jack Swinski has a negative three. Brian Reynolds. Has, uh, ne- so Swinski, Reynolds, and Edward Oliveres all have a negative three about outs above average. If you want to get technical, I mean, Oliveres was, I think, I think the whole, this whole conversation when this kind of started with when they brought in Oliveres because he had a negative seven outs above average. So, and then that just kind of like snowballed us talking about just like how the entire team was kind of constructed and stuff like that. Granted, right. that was before they brought in Taylor. So, you know, we did give him like props for that because we did think that. I think you and I were kind of like at the forefront as far as like we long term, we didn't really like Sawinski in center. Right. Whereas a lot more people were getting a lot more comfortable with it. And, and like he did get better last year with it. So But him getting better was still like bottom third of the league. Yeah. 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 So I mean, hey, credit where credit is due. Yeah. Rowdy Telez currently has a positive three DRS and only a zero OAA. So Yep. Yeah. He has a better outs above average than Ken Brian hates. Now I'm willing to bet things aren't going to end that way, right? I, I I think that would be pretty safe money, but yes, if we're looking at currently right now, um, th- we can we can actually say there's one aspect of the game where Rowdy Tellez hasn't been an issue, right? Yeah, and we can currently, start talking uh, offensively, that's a different conversation. Yeah, there. but <clears throat> defensively, so, he's holding his own. Yeah, currently, currently, Savant only has two players with a positive run value. Taylor at a positive plus two, and Triolo plus one. Yep. It's ugly right now. Yeah, yeah, it's across the board. Help. And, and I, I heard, I, I saw some stuff on Twitter too. They were talking about like how, you know, early in the season they got away with some stuff, and, and you know that helped them get some wins. So maybe. That would help them down the road. And I, I feel like over a 162 game schedule, when it's it's about who can do like the the little things right for the longer period of time. Yeah. And when, if you're get, having like defensive metrics like this, you're not doing the, the little things yeah. right. And so like six game losing streaks like this probably aren't as surprising as as you would think. Yeah. So. They, they made some slick plays today, so hopefully it continues. Yeah, yeah. So once he had that like really nice diving catch, um, Cruz made a nice little play. I still think mm. sometimes he he's trying to load up for like the big throw and stuff like that, and yeah. he ends up needing to have that hundred mile an hour throw to get the runner because he's yeah. taking like an extra step or two. Yeah, um, I guess he's he's another one too. Like he's at a negative two outs above average. Uh, I don't know how he is on like fan graphs right now, but I also looked it up since 2022 when he had his rookie season. There's only three players, w- three shortstops with the worst outs above average, a collective outs above average than, than O'Neill Cruz. And one of them, I don't even think is playing shortstop anymore. <laughs> yeah. So. He, he's a currently a negative three DRS. Yeah. Yeah. So. I mean, he got three hits tonight, and so, or yeah, the yeah. So, Pirates that's, won. That's, yeah, Pirates won. Let's not do too much complaining after <laughs> win. But yeah, I just found that funny that that. I mean, I, obviously, Charrington's not going to come out and be like, 
oh yeah, we like we really tanked on the defense to, to focus on the offense kind of thing. But specifically saying that the defense hasn't played to what they expected, I thought was gave me a little chuckle just because like we kind of that's one of the things that we specifically talked about when it comes to how they constructed the roster that it w- wasn't really very defensive friendly. And it was weird because they added so many pitchers that were reliant so on the contact, contact. Yeah. 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 So, all right. That's enough major league stuff. I get, I get, I get all worked up and, and depressed talking about major league stuff. Let's get, let's get to some minor league stuff. I know you didn't have a chance to watch too much with it. Not too uh, much. So I'm going to throw out some guys and talk about what I saw, and you can kind of chip in and, and, and anything like that. But uh, fun fact, fun fact we talked about. I mentioned this before we got before we started. Do you, The Pirates had the player with the worst WRC in all of minor league baseball among qualified hitters. You said we were done with the negative. Okay, but I'm getting to a positive with this. Okay. Okay. So Javi Rivas is a guy that I know we've talked about on the site before. I know someone who, like, someone like especially like Wilbur's talked about. Um, very, very good defensively. Pirates love their tall shortstops. Like this, but this, this guy can handle shortstop. Like he's, his range, his arm, all that stuff. He's a, one of the best defenders that the Pirates have in the system right there. And he he hits the ball pretty hard. Like, I don't, I don't have, like, the updated exit velocity numbers right now, but I would I – would, he's definitely taking a step forward. His issue is quality of contact and beating the ball into the ground. Like, his average launch, launch angle last time I checked was, like, a negative, like, 10 or 12 or something like that. Like, it, 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 it was bad. So, not a good start to the season. He was batting like 050 going into the the Sunday game. Three extra base hits, two doubles and a home run. Um, came up big at the end of the game and stuff like that. I, I would love to see like the Pirates would really just. I would love to see any hitter just to take some sort of step forward. And and I think on a tool side, he he's probably one of the more fun fun, exciting guys to, talk, to look, look at in the lower levels. Mm-hmm. One of those Tulsi guys that, yeah. if he puts it together, could be yeah. fun, yeah. but he needs to it, hit the ball more. One of the only guys that, uh, that Rosati hates. He, I, I feel <laughs> like he, I feel like every time that we, I, like we start talking about that, like I could feel his eye, eyes roll when I t- start talking about like Tulsi high, you know, Tulsi, if he puts it together kind of kid kids which is which is fair which is fair yeah like I, we're I, still waiting for all the other tools of kids if they put it together yeah, so. yeah I, I mentioned in their discord today about like our little uh back and forth on siani and, and hudson head <laughs> and, <laughs> and you, i'm and currently he's winning like, this year yes oh yeah it's not even it's not even close like sammy siani is like he like he's like the fourth or fifth best wrc in the system right now so, and I think Hudson Head's batting like 083 with a 800 OPS because all he's he, hit is he, like four home runs. He he has three hits and three home runs. So hell yeah! If you're a batted ball uh, batting average of balls in play guy, do not look up his his number. Um, yeah, but like Rebus is a fun fun guy to kind of keep an eye on. It like is he is he like a long term major league prospect? I mean. Who really, who really is in the pirate system in the lower levels at the, at this point? Like, because I mean, the bus question marks across is, the board. Yeah, yeah, but like he he's a fun guy to watch just because of the defense and and there's a little power in the bat and he's still relatively young. I think he's like 20, 21 years old. So, or maybe he turns twenty one this year. The another guy. Um, and I mentioned, I talked about it before because, like, you know, a lot of people started talking to him, I'm talking about him. And the first thing that everyone always brings up with Jack Brannigan is the power. They like to talk about, like, the 19 home runs and this and that. And, and like, 
he mentions like, well, that's probably like his third or fourth best tool that he has. On that. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't think maybe it's as loud as the 19 home runs would have anticipated. Like he, he's like definitely a speed guy. He even told me that he's more of like a speed type type of player anyways. Like it's speed's more part of his game than, than the power. That double plus speed. Yeah. That came out of nowhere. You, you like mentioned like BA, uh, baseball America, they had that. And like, you told me, and I was like, but I mean, it's, it's legit. Like I, I, like I've seen him in person. Like I don't have any like run times on him, but, but the guy could move. And obviously the glove mm-hmm. is the, the big carrier with him. Uh, this year they have him batting it out of the leadoff spot, which I actually really like. Um, and the swing and miss is really da- um, down. I, I don't know if it's updated or not, but going into like the Sunday game, he had like he was tied for like the lowest swing and strike rate in the system. Which I was saying, I'm looking at it now, and I mean his K percentage is only fourteen percent, and his walk percentage is twenty. So yeah, walking more than he strikes it, strike out. Mm-hmm. He's one of the few guys right now that we could say uh, didn't go the wrong way so yeah. far. Yeah, and and that's somewhat surprising because like if you remember yeah. back to the Arizona fall even like well like there's a lot of swing and miss when he was in Greensboro I think he had like a 32 yeah. strikeout rate in Greensboro last year he went to the fall league and I think his strikeout rate was like in the four close to 40 if not in the 40s yeah and spring training rolls around he was in the mate with the major league camp there's a lot of swing and miss early too like he wasn't hitting very good he started hitting the ball a little bit towards the end of spring Mm-hmm. So it was like it was kind of like we're going into the season, like, well, nothing's really changed. And look, now he's back in Greensboro. This kind of sucks. <laughs> Another guy that's yeah. just gonna get stuck. But like he kind of he's starting to kind of feel and like he's morphing into like someone that I feel like can be like a leadoff hitter, like one of your like old school leadoff hitter kind of guys. And then like if some of that power starts coming back two because i think he only he only has like two extra base hits right now uh yeah one home, run, one home run and one double or something like that yeah, yeah. Um, i just had it up like uh, yeah his uh iso was only let's see 132 was it yeah so yeah 132 so goes, down from 306 last year in greensboro so uh, okay so right now it looks like he's sacrificing a little bit of power to make sure he's making the contact as he kind of adjusts and gets everything down and all that stuff, I'm sure we'll start seeing the power numbers come back. I don't think he's a, I don't think he's like a guy like like you know like a Tris Gonzalez moving up to to like Altoona. We'll never see power from him again, kind of thing, or like yeah. from Chang. I don't know. I, I like I've always been a branding guy, and and it's this has been. I know it's kind of unfortunate he started in Greensboro again. Someone to be excited about. Yeah, yeah. It's an it's an encouraging start for where there hasn't been a lot of encouraging starts. So Sorry, I'm updating some numbers real quick. Updating numbers. Was there I know you didn't get a chance to um watch too much, but is there anything anything that kind of stood out as you're trying to as you're um catching back up from the weekend? Well, what I went ahead and did is, um, especially considering the slide the Pirates went on, I, I thought it'd be interesting to uh, look up the Pirates and their affiliates OPS over the last seven days and their ERA over the last seven days and match it up against like league average. So uh, what, what do you want to start with, hitting or pitching? I've been talking about pitching all or hitting all day. Let's let's just stick with that. Let's hear let's hear the hitting. All right, the all, right. all right. So we'll start the Pirates. I, I just updated with uh, today's game. So their uh, team OPS is five forty nine over the last seven days. League average is six ninety eight. The uh, Indies uh, last seven days is seven sixty OPS, twelfth out of twenty. League average seven seventy, so slightly below league average. The curve, six out of twelve, six sixty one OPS, league average six ninety six, so slightly below average. The hoppers, 
754 OPS, third out of 12. League average OPS, 669, which is actually the lowest of all four, or all five, which was kind of surprising. Yeah, yeah, so much for the whole Greensboro thing. Right. Or South Uh, Atlantic thing. Yeah, and then uh, the Marauders, uh, eighth out of 10th, 620 OPS, league average 670, which watching them, it kind of makes sense. So they're three and twelve now. Yeah, three and twelve. Like like you said, and uh, they they were they tripled their win total. <laughs> it's yeah, this, yeah. This they went from one to three. Uh, yeah, it, it's been rough down in in Bradenton. The, the Greensboro thing doesn't really surprise me because like this week felt like like the a lot of the bats really started to get going. Uh, Mackie yeah. hit his first home run. Nolasco hit his first home run. Uh, Planchard hit a home run. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he hasn't been playing. He hasn't been playing nearly as much as I thought he'd be playing down there. Yeah, me too. But I, I think uh, when I updated our little fantasy league uh, numbers, I'm like, oh, he's I finally got positive numbers out of him. <laughs> I, I'm terrified to look at mine. Although I feel like Matt Gorski had a pretty good week too, so I, I think he he probably. But like, I yeah, know, we, I we know won't Chase talk about. Me. Yeah, we won't talk about Mitch Jeb. Mitch Jeb, Mitch Jeb is not one of the guys in Greensboro that hit a home run last week. No. He's got me a whole zero point so far this year. I kind of feel like he may get like an inside of the park home run, but is he going to go like his whole professional career and not hit a home run? It's he, possible, man. It's possible, okay. which I was actually kind of thinking about, and uh, Corey might hate me for this. But just uh, when I was looking at the lineups today, it seems South Freelick, I was like, man, South Freelick in the majors is Mitch Chab right now. Oh, yeah. He's, the only thing that could save you is if I go on a Garrett Forrester rank right now. I was like, because he, he had something like a, like a 280, 290 batting average and like a 620 OPS. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I'm like, wait, Mitch Chab? Oh, never mind. Yeah. Yeah. So, so then hey, we'll, we'll go into the pitching, which is a little better, at least. There's a handful that are at least better than league average. Um, updated with today, uh, the Pirates are 27th out of 30 with a 502 ERA. League average is 4.0. I think before I updated, it was a 565 over the last seven days. Uh, Indy is third out of 20 with a 3.33 ERA. League average is 5.02. So, uh, pitcher's been getting lit up in AAA, at least, well, the International League. Uh, curve ugh, are 12th out of 12, 6.35 ERA. League average, 4.10. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the uh, Bowie Bay Sox did a number on their staff. Oh, yeah. That, that lineup is just sick. loaded. Uh, Greensboro was second out of 12 with a 3.33 ERA. League average ERA, again, the lowest, 3.95 ERA. And then the Marauders, at least the hitting or pitching, did a little better, which is probably why they tripled their win total with a fourth out of 10, 3.45 ERA. Oh, man. Bad timing. <laughs> yeah, that. That Bradenton pitching staff, that Bradenton rotation is like there's they're just intriguing. They they just intrigue me. Between Kennedy, Kennedy, Kennedy was able to get 10 whiffs with that with the fastball that barely averages 90 miles an hour. So uh, you know, like Carlson Reed has an amazing slider, probably the best slider in the system, probably close to the best slider in the system mm-hmm. on the prospects. Um would have finished that you real quick. Okay. Was the Marauders, fourth out of 10, 3.45 ERA, league average 4.15. I mean, that makes sense with them. That makes sense with them because, like, the rotation's intriguing. And then they have a bunch of, like, college college players in the bullpen that, that have, like, they've started to dominate now recently. So... I can I can see Bradenton's pitching staff if it stays similar to that this year, 
doing fairly well, like number wise. Are there going to be a lot of like legit major league prospects coming out of there? Probably not, but they'll probably do fairly well, like statistically, I feel like. Yeah, there's probably a handful of guys if they, you know, kind of bring things together, like uh, Christian Curtis, especially. He, he's, he made two bad pitches on on Sunday, and he paid for it on both of them, which that's the reality of pro ball. But also, it's a little disappointing because, like, he 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 locates two pitches a little bit better, and he probably throws, like, four shutout innings there. And then we're having, like, a whole different conversation about him this week, too. So, but it's, it's just gonna limit the mistake pitches. He's getting there. He's getting there because his first start was, you know, it's, and it kind of seems like he's. I know he had a lot of injuries and stuff like that. He's starting to tire pretty quickly once he gets to like the third or fourth inning. So, I, I don't know. I think I think a lot of people probably expect him to be a reliever, anyways, <laughs> but. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. He's another one of those guys that that is intriguing to like people like us, and maybe less intriguing to to others. Time will tell, and that's why. It, um, just as like a random, because uh, going back to like that little fantasy league, partially why uh, uh, Dominic Paracci, I was actually. Surprised at some of the numbers he's had, and they've been letting him go three, three plus innings in his three. I think he has ten point one innings in his three appearances. I'm, I'm surprised they didn't stick him in the rotation. I, I guess the, I guess there's not really any space with that, but I, I would much rather see like someone like Parachi get starts just to eat innings over someone like JP Massey, who we kind of like know what JP Massey is at this point, kind of thing. Um, I mean. Greensboro had to use – they used es- Escoto as a pitcher in a one-run ball game because they had to go to the bullpen so early that they were, like, out of pitchers to use that they can use. So they were trailing by one going into the ninth inning, and they brought they brought Escoto in to pitch. And he gave up – He's a probably a bit of a cannon on him, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At first I had to stop and think. I'm like, is this a thing? And then the it way he was throwing – and then the way he was throwing, it was clearly not a not a thing because it was just one of those mm. I'm just trying to get it over the plate kind of kind of things. So they had him playing uh, first two the other day. Yeah. So you never know. Maybe maybe they'll switch it up. So, yeah. But I mean interesting week in, in, in the minors. Um not a lot of wins, but I mean some so it, it was going to be a hard week for Altoona anyways. You know, Bowie, yeah. Bowie's a really good team. Um, Bowie, Bowie. Bradenton's trying to, yeah. Bradenton's still trying to figure things out and stuff like that. Um, but nope. enough with last week. Let's get into this week. Every, you know, um, If you follow the site, you know that Nola um, does a weekly preview every Tuesday. He kind of goes through each system to highlight any notable uh, prospects and such that the pirate system will be matched up against. So what you got for us this week? Well, this week, let's see. We're starting off with Indy who went five and one last week. They're facing the uh, storm chasers, Royals affiliate. Not much to speak on top in terms of prospects. Uh, their top Prospect currently is Tyler Gentry, ninth overall, uh, out of their top thirty on pipeline. Um, Nick Prado is currently in Omaha because he's been uh, struggling in the majors, so it's a name people might know. Who was a former top one hundred guy, but also uh, Colin Selby will be in Omaha. Whoa, with Omaha, <clears throat> um, down to the curve, who uh, are five and nine after a one and five week are facing the Akron Rubber Ducks mm-hmm. <coughs> who have the best prospect uh, a Pirates affiliate will face this week in Chase DeLauder, the, uh their former first-round pick out of JMU. JMU? Yeah, consensus top 100 prospect. Uh, there's Khalil Watson, who I'm sure people know. 
Uh, he, he's ranked 14th overall currently with the Guardians, but uh, n- neither of them are off to a bit. Of, not neither of them are off to uh, a very good start this year. Delauder only has a 604 OPS. Watson 644. Usually not for the pitching. There isn't a lot of. There's only one top 30 ranked prospect on the Rubber Ducks, but. Uh, <laughs> The Grasshoppers, <clears throat> as usual, had a above 500 week, three and two. They're facing Greenville, the Greenville Drive, who, again, don't have much in terms of prospects. I mean, they only had five of the top 30 on pipeline. Two of them are inactive. So uh, uh, Luis Perales is currently the number one Greenville prospect. Uh, ranked ninth overall, but he's only thrown nine innings or only thrown five innings this year with a nine ERA. Down to the Marauders, we get to face Clearwater Threshers, the Phillies organization, and uh, they have Aiden Miller, their uh, first round prep pick last year, mm-hmm. who cracked the pipeline top 100, uh, but none of the others currently. But their their roster also is mostly uh let's see what was that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Half of them are inactive. Unfortunately, one of them is George Clausen, who uh I believe could still come off near the weekend, but yeah, he's currently on the development list, so they might not get to see him this time, which is probably good for the Mats. It's yeah, good for that. He he actually he embarrassed a lot of the hitters there at the opening weekend. I feel like I feel like everyone that that they're playing is the same team that they played like opening weekend. Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that's yeah. But yeah, yeah, I mean, that's that's some good names on like you know like as far as like my personal favorite prospects and all that. I loved Aiden Miller coming out of the draft. I was a big Killer Watson mm-hmm. guy. Um, Chase the louder. On there, so that should be a fun week. Fun week. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't have the same pizzazz as some of the previous yeah. weeks have had, where like each each uh, affiliate was facing a top one hundred guy. But hopefully, maybe it's the week that all the organizations get back can get back on track. Yeah, yeah, that'd be nice. Aside from just Green maybe they need that easy. Yeah, yeah. Greensboro's doing fine. All right. Well, good stuff. Good stuff. And it's always you can check that out uh, every Tuesday morning as part of our morning rundown, six a.m. Bright and early, along with this podcast, along with this podcast, which comes out at four in the morning on the site. And, yeah, on the site. But I think uh, no, any any Nola knowledge, any anything like that, any last word. Or we um, <clears throat> drink lots of water. I don't think I drank enough this weekend, and my voice is destroyed. And you can hear it. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm hurting. Yeah. And if 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 you're not listening or not watching on YouTube, why don't you go in and give them your uh, your socials and and whatnot. All that. At Nola Jeffy N O L A J E F F Y. Yeah, give give Nola a, a, a follow. There, there's a um, there's a little discussion on people to on uh, in NS 9s Discord about like people that they like to follow and listen to and stuff like that. And I had to throw it out there that I I, I think Nola's very underrated in, in the <laughs> Twitter game. He he likes to troll people. I think that's I think that might have something to <laughs> do with it. But like. I, I, I've he, been he tame for I've been, been tame straight. for a while lately, though. Yeah, yeah. He 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 does a good job oh. keeping me straight with the com- when it comes to prospects. Yeah. Stuff. I, I I had a mini freak out about trading a minor re- league reliever for Joey Bart, <laughs> and he kind of he kind of like no dude, look at the stuff again. This this might be this might be something good, and it's turned out pretty good so far. So I was just say I'm a little surprised. Follow. I was about to say I thought I was near three fifty. I'm I'm ten away from four hundred. Let's go. Let's get Getting let's get over to four hundred followers, and then more. Yeah, and then more. Uh, but uh, 
You can follow me on Twitter at double underscore Murphy 88 bucks on deck Substack. We get, we got three articles cut that come out daily, unless it's an off day. Um, 6 a.m. morning rundown. We kind of recap the day that was before. We have a daily feature that comes out at 10 o'clock. And then depending on what time the Pirates play, we have a uh, game day thread where we can kind of come come join, talk talk about the game, talk about whatever with uh, other Pirates fans. And um, I think that was something that that a lot of people, a lot of readers definitely wanted us to continue. I know I don't talk about it much but i tried to when we when we started this thing to do as much of our own thing as far as try to piggyback off of off of other stuff Mm -hmm. uh but that's this is something that i definitely Mm -hmm. i was definitely happy that we kept doing i i I love the um response we get and there's quite a bit of people that that come and talk during the game so if you need somewhere to talk like building pirates community yeah, yeah, I, I I love seeing that stuff. Um, I don't I don't approach this as much as a fan anymore as I used to, um, but I, I love I love seeing the response that we get when it comes to like the the game day stuff. Um, if if you if you have the means, if you have the ability to, uh, you help the site, you know, become a paid member, subscribe to the site. We do. I do video breakdowns at least one one a week during the season. I did two last week. I did one on Hunter Barco, one on Lonnie White Jr. Okay. Um, video breakdowns. I'm gonna be making a trip to Bradenton soon. Um, also to Greensboro. Any kind of content or anything like that that I get while I'm down there will be for the paid members. So. Going and then also too, we updated our um, top twenty-five prospect list. So didn't realize I still had Jackson Wolf on it, so we had to fix that. And then Quinn, and then Quinn Priester um, graduated as well. So lots of stuff. So I feel like it's worth your time on that. And um, yeah, yeah, bucks on till next week. Till next week. All right, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.